Hi everyone. Today's lesson is lesson 2.3 and we are learning about emission and absorption spectra. So spectra would be the plural of spectrum. Okay, now um, first thing here. So when energy is supplied to atoms the electrons are going to absorb the energy. So as you can see here, we've got an incoming photon of energy. So this is our energy coming on. The electrons are going to absorb that, okay? Now, when they absorb that, they jump from the ground state to what's called an excited state. So they're going to, here it is in the ground state, and they're going to jump up to an excited state. And this is in a different energy level or different orbital, okay? So we've got ground states, we've got excited states. And so they jump when they absorb the energy. Um, so an electron is at its ground state when it's in the lowest possible valence shell. So the picture on the left here, this is our ground state. So the ground state is stable. That electron is happy where it is, just doing its thing, right? Along comes a photon here. The electron absorbs the energy, and as we see, it now moves to the excited state. Now, this is unstable, this excited state here. Um, so when an electron gains the energy, it jumps to an electron shell further away from the nucleus, and this is the excited state. So when it jumps farther away, um, that is going to be the excited state. And always remember, this is an unstable uh, way for the electron to be, for the atom to be, and it wants to go back to its ground state. Now, when it does go back to its ground state, it's going to release energy. Um, and it does that in certain uh, wavelengths, certain energies. So there's certain photons that are going to be released. So, and as we can see here, so we've got uh, picture A here. So this is just our normal atom, and then it becomes excited. So it's going to expand to those excited uh, orbitals, shells, and then when it releases it, it goes back to normal, okay? So it goes back to its ground state there. Now, how far an electron jumps? tells us how much energy was absorbed. Um, so we've got this sort of stair, I'm just gonna look at the staircase model here. So this is our ground state here. And so the electron can jump, depending on how much energy is absorbed, it can jump uh, to one of these. And then once they're in their excited states, when they fall back down to their ground states, um, they release certain uh, frequencies. So if we look here, the other diagram maybe explains that better. So energy absorbed, um, as you can see, we go all the way up to the top here, but then when it falls down, if we're falling right from the top to the bottom, that's our violet, right? That's high energy. And then we've got our blue, um, green, red. So those are linked to the energies. Because remember our Roy G. Biff, we've got energy as we move from the red, energy is increasing as we move from our red to the violet. Okay, now, uh, this is linked to emission spectra. So we looked at this on our very first lesson here, 2.1. An emission spectra is the spectrum of frequencies of electromagnetic radiation emitted due to an atom or molecule making a transition from a high energy state to a low energy state. So as they, they get excited, so you shine light on, on these, uh, these would be gases here, if you shine light on them, as they they as the electrons they they're going to absorb the photons of energy and then they're going to emit it so as they emit it they emit it at certain frequencies and that's why we've got these emission spectra and why they're all different too they're they're um, unique to every single type of compound or or atom element, I guess I should say. Um, and these are just some examples here. So hydrogen, for example, is going to emit frequencies of light uh, where you see them here. Um, and usually there's a dominant color in here. So for example, let's look at sodium. Uh, if we look at sodium, if you do uh, sodium when it's heated is going to appeal ye appear yellow and that's because it's got these strong bands here in the yellow region uh, so it's an emitting frequency uh, sorry it's emitting light at a frequency that correlates to the to the color yellow now in order to see emission spectra we need a spectrometer and we are going to do a lab on this this is going to be lab number five and we're going to uh, see the emission spectra of various gases now 
We have something called the absorption spectra. So this is the opposite of the emission. So this would be an emission spectrum here. The absorption spectrum is the exact opposite, okay? So this would be where, um, where frequencies of light are being absorbed, okay? And they're always going to be convert, uh, opposite to each other here, okay? Uh, now, it's important to note the continuous spectrum is showing the whole spectrum like this, and we see the colors all blended into each other as we go. Um, so that's the continuous spectrum. Uh, now, flame test. This is what your lab number four is going to be on. Um, so the energy, a flame test is essentially just an emission spectra. Um, we're heating it up, we're, we're supplying energy to different um, compounds, and then we're seeing what color they are. So the, or, or how, what frequencies of light they're emitting as they fall back to their ground state. So the energy emitted as electrons fall back to their ground states corresponds to particular wavelengths of light. And this is why we see our different colors here. So. Um, and, and we can use this in terms of for, for identification of things. So as you can see here, we've got our copper chloride. Copper always gives you a really, really strong uh, greeny blue color there. Um, yeah, so we can use a flame test to identify what an unknown substance is made of. Okay, so no assignment for this particular lesson. I want you to just get ready for your labs. You're going to do lab number four. Um, right away and then lab number five will be pretty much right after that so um, you can start looking at that. Thanks everyone.